Hello and welcome back to Mastering the Blue Book. This video focuses on pin sites and in particular how to find your pin site when you can't use copy with reference. The pin site is the number you see here highlighted in red in our Galt v. Garrison roadmap. As you already know, you need to list the first page of the case, but when do you need to list a pin site? The answer to that question for diligent attorneys is always. You always need to give the judge or partner a pin site so he or she can find the information you're referring to easily. You don't want your reader to have to search through an entire case to find your premise. You want to direct readers to the precise page you're talking about. Now there is one exception, at least in my classes. For authorities you've introduced with a C generally signal, that's our background signal, I don't require a pin site. This is because you're referring to the entire case, not just one page in the case. So that's a situation in which I'll let you get away with omitting the pin site. Now, how do you find a pin site? As an initial matter, if you're using copy with reference, something we've talked about in prior lectures, you'll be getting your pin sites automatically. However, there may be times you need to do this by hand, so let's talk about that. There are three different situations you can find yourself in as a legal researcher in need of a pin site. First, you could be in the library, looking at a case in an actual book called a reporter, and incidentally, this is the same situation you'll face if you've downloaded a case and printed it out in PDF format from Westlaw. Second, you could have downloaded a case and printed it out in Word, not PDF format. Finally, you could be just looking on screen. You didn't print anything out at all. You're just going by what you're seeing online. Let's take a look at that first scenario. You're looking at a case in a hard copy reporter or a PDF. We'll use Galt v. Garrison as the example. This is what Galt would look like in a hard copy reporter or a PDF. Notice at the top right, you see the page number. But let's step back a bit and look at this page farther away. Galt starts about halfway down the first column on page 993. The information above Galt is from another case, so all of the cases are printed in these reporters continuously. They don't start a new case on a new page. All that said, it's easy in a reporter to know which page number to use as your pin site. You just look at the top of the page. Let's talk now about scenario number two. Suppose we're looking at a word printout. This time we'll use the Lois Sportswear case instead of Galt. The numerical part of your citation is at the top of the page, 104 FRD 103. You know from looking at that citation that the first page of this case is 103. Don't be confused by the number you see at the top right. This is simply the page number for the printout. Now, beyond the first page, how do you know which page you're on? You have to look for it embedded somewhere in the text. For instance, right here, we see that we're turning, at least in the hard copy reporter, from page 103 to page 104. In other words, in the hard copy reporter, we would see the words not only in this form, but also at the bottom of page 103 and the words before the Court of International Trade at the top of page 104. If in your written work, you want to say something about there being 22 documents at issue in Lois, your pin site would be 104. So when you're using a word printout, you have to hunt around for your pin site. 
It's not as easy to find as it is in a hard copy reporter or a PDF. Let's look now at the final scenario. You don't have any hard copy at all. You're just going by what you see on screen. Finding pen sites online is a lot like finding them in a word printout. You just have to hunt around in the text until you find them. Online, the numbers are green, so they stand out a bit more, but the process is the same. In this case, the words we would be seeing at the bottom of page 995 in the hard copy reporter would be, did permit plaintiff to file, and the words we would be seeing at the top of page 996 in that reporter would be an offer of proof. If you want to cite the phrase an identifiable state purpose in your own writing, your pin site would be 995. And if you wanted to say something about the requirements must fall, your pin site would be 996. Before we end the video, there's one more thing I want to touch on. The special problems that can arise with locating pin sites in Supreme Court cases. These problems arise because we have three different Supreme Court reporters and we have a parallel pagination system to reflect those different reporters. Here's an example of the Supreme Court case Stewart v. Abend. It involved actor Jimmy Stewart, director Alfred Hitchcock, and their famous movie, Rear Window. We're looking at the case on screen, not in a hard copy reporter or in a printout. The first thing I'd like to talk about in this case is the syllabus, something we see at the top of every Supreme Court case. To see it, we need to scroll down past the headnotes. One easy way to do that is to minimize the headnotes by clicking here. As you can see, underneath the headnotes is where we see the syllabus. Supreme Court cases, of course, can be very long, and the syllabus gives us a thorough overview of the case so we can get an idea of what it's about without reading the whole thing. However, the syllabus is not binding. You cannot cite to it. And that's true for all federal cases and most state cases. I've only seen one state I believe it's Ohio, where citations to a syllabus are permitted because the syllabus is considered binding. Keep in mind that a syllabus can be quite long. What we're seeing here is only the very beginning of this particular syllabus. If I scroll down a bit, you can see that it talks about one holding, which it breaks into parts A through F and then it goes on to talk about a second holding. When we see the word opinion, we know that this is where the opinion actually begins. Sometimes it won't be the precise word opinion, it might be something similar, but you'll see some sort of heading here, and you'll also see the judge's name, and that will let you know that you can start pin citing from this point on. If you're at the top of a case and you want to get down to the opinion quickly, go to the go to drop down menu and select the word opinion. Or again, if you don't see the word opinion, look for something similar and it will pop you down to that point. Again, you're always going to see the judge's name there as well as some sort of heading. And this is true of all cases, Supreme Court cases, cases from other federal courts and cases from state courts. For example, if we look again at Lois Sportswear, which is a federal trial case, we once again see the word opinion, and after this point, we know we can start using our copy with reference technique and citing or quoting the case. So back to our problem. In Supreme Court cases, how do we find the right pin site? Let's look at a Supreme Court case on screen. Notice that we see two sets of page numbers, one with an asterisk, one with one asterisk, I should say, and the other with two. What does this mean? Well, if we scroll up to the top of the case, we see the numerical portion of the citation. 
The one I've circled in green here is to U.S. reports, and the one I've circled in red is to the Supreme Court reporter. The numbers with one asterisk that I've circled in green go with U.S. reports, and the numbers with two asterisks in red go with Supreme Court reporter. As you know, the official reporter is U.S., and the Blue Book always wants us to cite to that reporter if we can. So generally, we would use the numbers I've circled in green for our pen sites. The upshot of all of this is that you should beware in Supreme Court opinions. Don't just use the first pen site you see. It might be from the wrong reporter. And with that, you know in all sorts of different situations how to find the correct pin site.